Well, hello there, my beautiful people. How are we all doing today? You know, God bless you and all that wonderful stuff. And also, there's a sword and I have a shield. And we're going to stab! But we're not really going to stab today. Um, today, I decided to revisit Yamina uh, as a character because we're going to uh, go around and talk a little bit about the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to say this before I get into this. I, I am kind of considering making another Knights of the Blazing Sun character. Probably, I kind of still want to name her Yamina, but I can't because, you know, then there's they're got duplicates. So I think I I might just put like two A's or two N's in there. Yemen, no. <laughs> Yemen, no. But um, part of it is because I kind of... So this is my first character I played... Eh, when I really got back into uh, this game. And the problem I discovered, I got some liquid death here. It was just sparkling water, but you know, you know, why not? I like sparkles. Sparkle. My inside sparkle! But anyway, um, the, the problem was that I didn't do enough RVR. If you see here, only level 39, which is not, I, I should be well higher than that i should have been leveling up mostly through rvr i think i needed to do more um uh rvr type stuff and that and for those of you who don't play this game and just kind of checking out for the warhammer's lore uh, that's like realm versus realm which is like the pvp in this game which is, is what it's mostly about and i should have been doing more of that Instead of just being at level 39, so like by the time you get to level 40, with your regular level, you could be uh, higher up here on the RVR scale. And you know, I, I'm not going to delete Yamina. I, I have in the past, if I just get to a point where characters are just like, I'm not going to play them anymore, or I, I like maybe want to change like what I'm doing with them, I'll just get rid of them. But in this particular case, I decided I'm going to keep her because I love Yamina. I love the story I made with Yamina. I'm not going to. And the only reason I, I would even consider deleting her is if I really wanted to um, use this exact same name, which in all honesty, I might. I might do that. I might just like sell all the stuff I have, send the money to another character and just, you know, start over and do it do it correctly this time uh because I, I haven't done very much in the level 40 range i just i don't know i i like i like this game a lot for leveling up and playing early on and doing like um like going through the warhammer world and things like that like this is this is fairly pretty here where i'm in um illyrian El Diron. Ellie Ryan. Ellie Ryan. El Ryan. <laughs> you know what I mean. You can see the name. <laughs> um and, and I greatly enjoy her. I like the way she looks. I think she's cool. I might make a Khadija. Which is her older sister who uh Oh, I, I don't have one. Like, oh, fuck you, disabled. Nah, eh. You're just a lion. Whoa. That's an interesting bunch of stuff to just randomly get from there, but okay. I'll take it. But no, you know, like, um, I'm not going to play this character as much. I, I like her, and I like traveling around with her. I like just her existing, and she has cool armor. So that's, that's enough for me. But yeah, I think I might start over with a new... Ooh, look how mean she looks. Ooh, I'm so mean. Why is she doing that with her mouth? That's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, but it's fine. Anyway. Okay, she stopped. I was like, what the hell's going on? Um, but yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the Knights of the Blazing Sun. The Knights of the Blazing Sun are my favorite knightly... Well, I will preface this by saying they're my favorite knightly order that I know about. There are actually a pretty big number of knightly orders in the Empire. 
and um, some I think are technically in Marienburg as well as I think there's a couple that are like in like Estalia and things like that, but this is the this is the one that I know about and I love and I love this order. And I, I think about this order a lot just because they have they also look really cool because they got like armor like this with the gold trim and the sun and the sun images and I love the sun images. It always makes me think of Sura or you know Makali, but everything makes me think of Makali. Hell, I could look at a horse and think of Makali. So you know, that's me. But here, we'll start with this little quote here. The famed Knights of the Blazing Sun. The Knights of the Blazing Sun are a small elite order of Templars devoted to the study and mastery of the science and art of warfare. These fervent followers of Mermidia value ability and accomplishment over all other factors, including noble birth. It is because of this the order has grown in prosperity, attracting the finest military minds to its banner. A Knight of the Blazing Sun Sun's primary goal is to obtain perfection in the art of war. As such, they travel the old world individually seeking battle, both large and small. A war band with the Knight of the Blazing Sun at its head is a potent and is a potent force capable of dealing with opponents with a level of cunning that ensures victory before the battle is even joined. And I think that's really cool. It's also kind of funny. Uh, it, there's a picture of a banner here, and it has Sol Invictus on it. And if you know anything, Sol Invictus is actually like a Roman deity, and it's like, it, it's it's very interesting. Like he's big, big Roman deity. So, you know what I, I realized? Um, because I'm kind of working on my own little setting right now because I enjoy doing so, and I have like a fantasy setting and a uh, futuristic setting, kind of like. Warhammer does, and I've been working on both of these, and I'm just doing it for fun. The thing I realized, or one of the things I realized that makes Warhammer so enjoyable for me is all the random historical references. Just the random references to historical things and, like, the, the taking inspiration from the real world and bringing that. I personally find that way more enjoyable, and I think it's interesting. Now, some of the references, I would say, are maybe not necessarily great greatest i mean i think araby should have something other than just slavery and you know piracy in it and it does to to a certain extent especially with the fan made stuff but um i, I when i think of araby i think of like so much more that could be done because i think of the arabian world and i think of everything else that could be done there and you know like it was actually kind of funny because I mentioned that in one of my Araby videos and somebody commented like, what do you think that the Arabs didn't have slaves? I was like, well, that really wasn't my point. My point wasn't that they didn't have slaves because like it, at this time in the world, pretty much there was kind of slaves everywhere. Really. It's some less so in certain areas, but they're kind of slaves are just a thing. Like, you know. And slavery is a kind of diverse topic where, like, a lot of it is not anywhere near as bad as the Atlantic slave trade. But a lot of it is still very bad because it's like, you know, I mean, it's all bad because it's like limiting people's freedoms. But it, it's much more complex. Anyway, that wasn't my point. My point wasn't like, oh, I don't think that they should have slaves at all. My thought was simply they should like lessen the amount of like, like, I don't want that to be like when I say Araby, I don't want just slaves. I don't want that to be like the first thing I want it to be like, it can be in there. I mean, cause if we, you know, we want to talk about the historical reality and if we want to talk about like what it's based on, okay, that makes some sense, but just being like the only thing they have, that's kind of like, man, you know, is this guy, what level is this guy? Oh, he's, he's trivial. Okay. All right, hey, hey, how are you done? Look, man, I wasn't even going to fight you or anything. I wasn't going to do nothing. You just, like, decided, hey, I'm going to attack the lady with the really fancy armor. Not 100% sure why you did... Oh, well, you're a goblin. You're a goblin. You want to stab me. Goblins do like stabbing. But goblins can also be friends, don't forget. Anyway. But yeah, I, I've discovered that I really like the um, historical references and like, adding stuff from the real world. I feel like it gives it a bit of flavor and a bit of love. And it can really give you a lot of inspiration. Like, just 
you know, just like, okay, these are the Ottomans. Like, just putting in, these are the Ottomans, and you don't have to make them exactly like the Ottomans. But hey, the Ottomans have, like, a very rich history. You could talk about all kinds of different things. Or, like, with, you know, the Arab peoples. The Arab people have such a rich history that stretches for so long back into the past, even though a lot of people will just think Islam and then Arabs. It's like, you can actually go further back than that. It's very interesting to read about them being mentioned in, like, ancient chronicles and stuff where people, and, you know, it's like how this, like, word that used to kind of be really an insult or basically calling somebody like a not a lout but um what would you call it a silly billy uh a, a hillbilly basically basically like hillbillies or rednecks or whatever or like these uncivilized peoples um uh and now it became like a kind of more like a honorable with especially with the association of islam because you know muhammad was an arab person and it's like wow that's actually really interesting that's something interesting you could do although this video is supposed to be about the origins of the blazing suns i'm sorry i just i just got on the little thing there anyway um so something that's interesting here is that you can actually find that the um the Knights of the Blazing Sun are across the Empire, Telia, Istalia, and formerly the Riemann Empire, before the Riemann Empire was no longer a thing. The Order of the Blazing Sun, more commonly referred to as the Knights of the Blazing Sun, is a Templar order dedicated to the worship and martial practice of the goddess of warfare and battles, Myrmidia. This particular order is among the mightiest and most well-known within the Empire. Boasting a distinguished history dating back to the Great Crusades, they were amongst the first of the knightly orders to travel to Nuln and join Magnus the Pious during the Great War against Chaos, having fought with him all the way to the Battle of Kislev itself. We go where we are needed, we do what must be done. Hermidian's saying often adopted by the order. It's kind of interesting that, like, because that's in one sense a very generic saying, like, we go where we are needed, we do what must be done. But at the same time, I think that it does kind of like, Mermidia is not just a goddess of warfare, but, you know, like, in something like Warhammer, warfare is going to be the thing that's kind of, like, blah, 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 advise it at front. These knights take great pride in their equipment and abilities as their power prowess in battle is equal, if not greater, than even the oldest and most powerful of many of the Templar orders. They are often seen charging on the battlefield in their highly polished and resplendent armor of black and gold adorned Adorned with sigils of the sun, many of their weapons blaze with the bright and with a bright and fiery power enchanted with the divine flames of their goddess. And you know, hey, fire goddesses are pretty cool. You know, like, hey, sometimes you talk about turning your heart into a cremation ground because Makali likes to dwell there. Hey, why not why not have a fire? God I mean Jimmy Dean. I think these guys are really cool, like especially in their like imagery and stuff like that. Like just like these guys that are like they're not like the oldest order, but they've trained and they've become like this uh, really powerful and kind of um, well recognized order for their martial prowess as well as like. You know, they always stand up for justice and doing the right thing. But one thing I really like is that it's mentioned that they they recruit not just from, like, the most, like, uh, elite and noble families. They recruit from everybody. Anyone who's, like, it's like a, a meritocratic thing. I think that's really cool. Like... We could talk about the myth of meritocracy within, like, the real world. But in the Warhammer world, I'm willing to embrace the myth of meritocracy. At least to a certain extent. Not a mean Jimmy Dean. None can stand against us. Well, I mean, I'm standing against you right now, bud. And I killed you. So, you know, manly beard. Why did I take this? I, oh, you had a manly beard. I guess I'll take it. Uh, silly, 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 silly. You mean is silly. She's just a big lady with a big sword. Who likes to kill? Who likes to kill the bad guys? Oh, look, look little woodland sprites. As a patron of the order devoted to the goddess Mermidia, these Templars 
devoted themselves to the study and mastery and science of art of warfare in all aspects. These fervent followers of Mermidia value ability and accomplishment over all other factors, including noble birth and prowess in battle. Wait, why does that sound like it's an exact repeat of like the start? Yeah, well, it's because of this that the old world, the order has grown prosperity over the years. Yeah, for some reason it just kind of that's like a almost an exact repeat of the thing that was there earlier. That's kind of interesting. The Knights of the Blazing Sun are Templars of Mumuria and the goddess, the goddess's largest order in the Empire. They have a good reputation, but. It's a, Suspicion surrounds their dedication to a war god is often regarded as foreign to the Empire. The Order favors nobles who are willing to declare their faith in Remedia and rise above petty intercult rivalries. A wealthy order, a steady stream of gold flows into their vaults from Telia and Estelia and expeditions further afield. That's very interesting. So, like, they kind of have, like, a little bit of this, like, foreigner vibe to them as well, which I, once again rather enjoy especially within the empire it's like oh man you worship this foreigner god is like mm, bitch i'll cut down chaos demons with my foreign goddess what the fuck you doing go ahead pray to man and see if he gives you a trident of water he might no like seriously pray to man i want to see if you can can you do powers from man maybe you can get a big uh river flowing and to drown the chaos which you know I mean, they're they're actually respectful of the other gods. They, like, it's not like some of the cults of Sigmar people who just go crazy and scream that Sigmar is the only god worth worshiping. You know what I mean? Because they're not god racist. <laughs> the Knights of the Blazing Sun are by no means the largest, or the largest of the Mermidian orders. For example. The Order of the Righteous Spear, along with countless sister orders, is much, much larger, but thanks to their reputation, the Order of the Blazing Sun is by far the most famous and well-respected, not to mention the richest within the Empire. The Order was formerly based in the middle of the Empire within the heart of Telebecland, Telebecland, but due to their popularity, they have begun rapidly to rapidly gain support and influence in the South, and in these parts, the Order holds a great deal of political power amongst the nobility. In recent years, the Cold of Remedia has also gained a stronghold amongst the Imperial worlds of the Empire, replacing Ulrich in the prayers of more southerly soldiers. As the cult has ascended, so too has the Order's fortunes and wealth in wealth and power. Foremost of the Empire's duty is the maintenance and guarding of the important pilgrimage routes between the Empire and the holy sites of Margarita. Ma oh, it's not Margarita, it's Margarita. These duties have proven to be especially lucrative. As many upper class would be pilgrims are willing to pay handsomely for, for the guarantee that their gods will indeed keep them safe as they travel, albeit using remedians as vessels to ensure their safety. Since it is established the order since it was established, the order spread throughout the lands of distant Estalia and is one of the most prominently night, nightly orders in that distant nation. So, yeah, they're not the biggest order of Mermidia. In fact, there's actually a decent number of other ones, which is kind of which is kind of neat to think about. Let's it's, it's, it's kind of neat to think about. There's like all kinds of these nightly orders and. Maybe these guys aren't like the most, the biggest, but they're like one of the most famous just because of all the cool stuff they do. They run around and do a smack. They do a smack against the evils. And that is, I personally think, pretty cool. Pretty cool, my dude. Oh, Everlorn Maidens. Hello, ladies. How goes it? Is, did you have your breasts exposed like that? That just seems like it's exposing like a lot of area to be stabbed and and your legs are also exposed to uh, whatever they're ancient warriors of combat who am i to question the way they do warfare they've probably done a pretty good job of stabbing things that are bad
Unlike most other Templar orders, its members do not reside in large chapter houses. Instead, they travel the land individually or in small groups looking for new challenges to test their skills and lend their aid to the poor and defenseless. They are well versed in the use of arms and armor, and their true expertise is, in, is as tacticians and strategists. And they often serve as military advisors and commanders on the battlefield when the former commander is far too incompetent to lead. Which is something that happens in the Empire more than we'd like to admit. The Empire is also very interesting because some of the people who are like captains and like leaders in the Empire are actually very competent and like there's some meritocracy there, but there's also a lot of things that are just like, I am the wealthiest person, so I get to be in charge. Because that's just the Empire for you, baby. Sometimes you gotta cut down the Empire head man so that you can have a tactician man, tactician lady, the biggest tactician lady, who is Yamina. Look how cool she is. She has an evil looking braze of fury. Let's see. Throughout Estalia, countless villages, farms, and isolated outposts owe their survival to the timely arrival and subsequent assumption of command by a knight of the blazing sun. Since these knights spend a great deal of time away from their chapter houses and temples, often embarking on crusades or quests of glory for their order, they would often travel in small groups of their fellows, sometimes alone, and lend support to whatever military endeavors most needed their aid. Whether it is bolstering beleaguered units of soldiers on the battlefield, taking command of leaderless companies in the midst of the campaign, offering military advice to generals and nobles, or training local militia in the art of warfare. See, these guys are just like the people's order, man. Like, power to the people. These guys are like the cool, like, they're actual heroes. That's part of what I like about them so much. And uh, each knight must spend the first several years directly after his, his or her, I'm going to say his or her, initiation performing these sorts of deeds. And only after putting his skills and training to the test may he return to the chapter house as a full brother of the order. Once they return, these knights would normally live in a similar fashion as their other fellow knights. But there are some notable differences. The knights spend a great deal of time training in their rather unusual methods of warfare, unafraid to experiment with ploys, tactics, and equipment that other knightly orders might overlook or find dishonorable. Many of these knights are even well-trained archers as a result which led to the formation of the knights of the verdant field. Some of these knights have, have even been known to use highly burnished shields employed to dazzle the knight's opponents and reflect the sunlight and strike well, they are blind, so like they use this shield to like blind people, which is pretty neat. When not doing physical training, these knights would spend a great deal of time in the discussion of broader military tactics with deployment and maneuver of entire armies, use of terrain, and placement of artillery. Well, while all knights have a grounding in military theory, the greatest tacticians in the Empire may be found within the ranks of the Order itself. And these guys have done all... kinds of funny things. And they they have been doing all this crazy stuff for just like such a long time. And of course I just want to talk about just a couple more elements here that I personally find interesting. The Day of Sanctuary. A festival unique to the Empire is a Day of Sanctuary. It remembers the founding of the Knights of the Blazing Sun and it's celebrated in every city where the goddess Mermidia has a temple. A mounted procession of the Order of the Blazing Sun are splendid in their battle gear wine winds through the streets, ending in Mermidia's altar where her priests bless the knight's weapons. Relations to other cults. Antillian Antillian Mermidian myth Theology, Mermidia is believed to favor the Order of the Eagle, Astal Order of the Eagle, Astalia, Astalian teach, Astalian teach. It should be Astalians teach, the Order of the Blazing Sun own, owns it instead. The Order of the Blazing Sun 
is the oldest Mermidian order in the Empire and works independently of the Order of the Eagle. While the Knights of Margarita, who graduate from the Aquila Academy, secretly go on to join many more Meridian organizations, many of the members of that secret society choose the Knights of the Blazing Sun, so the borders between the groups are often fuzzy. Knights of the White Wolf Captains often disparage Mermidians for their feminine southern ways. <laughs> This sometimes led to attrition between the two orders, even during a battle fought on the same side. I would just like to point out that I think that the Knights of the White Wolf are dicks! And that the Mermidian Knights are so much cooler and better, and don't you know it, like, because they have the feminine powers. But yeah, I just wanted to share some of that stuff about the Knights of the Blazing Sun. I think that they're really cool, especially because, like, they... They defy so many expectations of what it means to be a knightly order. Like if you know, like the Reichsguard are the knights of the White Wolf are like the kind of typical examples of knights in the Empire. The Knights of the Blazing Sun uh, have some of those typical examples, but kind of go out of their way to be, you know, at least a little bit different and to do some different and interesting things with it. And you know, they have like this slightly. Um, foreign nature about themselves which I personally think is rather interesting but um yeah I, I don't know I, I this is probably my favorite knightly order at least out of all the ones I've read I'm gonna keep reading more and trying to find see if there's any more that I, that I like even more but I also you know love me some Remedia she is one of my favorite goddesses in all of Warhammer lore and things so you know it's it's kind of hard to find one that is better although she's basically just athena but you know why not why not have history athena in history rome doing history and not history times you know what i mean jimmy dean anyway i hope you all enjoyed listening to me babble about warhammer and specifically the knights of the blazing sun and you're uh, really cool and great for stopping by, and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day. I hope Mermidia blesses you in all of your endeavors. I hope Makali blesses you in all your endeavors, and I hope that you get lots of hugs and love, and you know that the cat loves you. He sends his love your way in the forms of fluff, and yeah, I hope that you all have an excellent time. Bye-bye.